All right, well, I'm, my name is Grant Gibbs. I'm a South African. I'm involved in the Hippo Water Roller Project. I've um, been working on this project for about 15 years now um, in various capacities. Um, I initially was in the IT sector, information technology. I was initially a, a technician working predominantly on Wang equipment. And somewhere along the line, I think I was looking for something more meaningful to get involved with. And um, I came across the Hippo Roller and just thought that this is a great idea. I saw an article in the newspaper. And um, the roller, by the way, was developed by two other South Africans, uh, Johan Jonker and Petty Petzer. So I got involved in about 1993. I'll, talk, I'll just point to this one and then I'll use this to, to talk it through. Um, this is a Hippo Water Roller. It consists of three components. It has the handle, which is a clip-on, clip-off handle. We have the large blue drum, which is 24 gallons in capacity. And then we have a screw cap um, opening and closing. The drum is made out of a, um, it's a type of plastic called polyethylene. Polyethylene has a very long molecular structure, which gives it flexibility. But we've made the wall thickness very thick so that, well, it doesn't need to be too thick, but thick enough that we don't um, puncture very easily, it doesn't crack very easily. You would need to have it filled with water and allow it to roll down the hill and hit a tree before it actually cracks. Um, just getting back to the roller, um, the idea being that the, the cap unscrews and you would then have a very large opening um, to fill, because very often you have water, a lot of water gets wasted when they put it under the tap and a lot of water because most of the containers they use these days have a very small opening so we've deliberately got a large opening the other reason that it's so large is that you can put your whole arm inside there to wash it out and clean it uh, important feature is that it's small enough that small children can't fall inside there and drown which, um, the screw cap is made from the same material um, the handle is made from a mild steel tubing and it has a very special um, bush that we use on the end which is effectively the wheel bearing. Um, and these two components are the only items that needs to be concerned about in terms of, of maintenance. Yeah, can just show the end of it, yeah. Alright, this is uh, one of the bearings I was talking about. I'll pull it off for you. You see that it's made from a flexible material but its um, wear properties in terms of abrasion is 14 times better than steel. So this effectively is our wheel bearing, which protects both the, the, well, protects the drum from the um, pivot point from the, the steel from cutting a hole into the drum. We do have a little plastic insert in the handle to offer some protection in case one of these gets lost. You can see it's bright red and it's quick and easy to see if it's gone missing. Um, but there's some protection while they get access to another one of these for replacement. So we'll always deliver extra of these into a community project. Perfect. Okay, one. These rollers land up in the most rural parts of Africa and access to spares is very, very difficult. So we've tried to keep the unit as maintenance free as possible. All right, so once the roller has been filled, and there's various ways of doing it, sometimes I've, um, they will use a smaller bucket to pour water into the hippo roller until it's full. Other times they'll just wheel the roller right into the river, fill it up, put on the cap, and then roll it out again. Um, but once the roller is full, you've got a very large screw cap, which is not nice bright red, so it's not easy to lose. And um, they essentially just screw it on until it's nice and tight. Once it's full, you then lay the roller over on its side. And you take the handle and you, you clip it in on the one side. And you'll see there's a bit of tension. Um, pull it across and you clip it into the other side. Um, and you're now able to roll the roller along the ground. So rather than trying to carry the roller above the head, which is n the norm, um, we just the weight is actually borne on the ground. So that makes it a lot easier. So the, um, 
A full roller will handle 24 gallons, which I think is about 200 pounds of weight. Um, um, a typical container carried on the head, a, a bucket, is about 5 gallons, which I think is about 15 pounds more or less. Um, so a full hippo roller is actually lighter than a bucket carried on the head. Um, we're now talking about level ground. Obviously when we go uphill, um, it does get heavier. And the roller has been designed in such a way that when you, you, you can pull the roller uphill and you can push it downhill. Um, if it's extremely steep, two people can walk next to each other and comfortably pull the roller up, uphill as well. Um, when they get to their destination, they, again, they would simply unclip the handle, put it one side, and you'll notice that it has a rounded um, surface here, so that you effectively roll it up into the upright position. It does have uh, a ring at the bottom to make it uh, stable when it stands upright, so it's not easy to knock it over. And the other important thing is that the roller serves as a very important form of hygienic storage in the home. Uh, because of the cap, it's sealed, water can't get inside, dust can't get, dust can't get inside and um, contaminate the water. When they need water, they would typically take a large cup and dip it in and scoop water out without getting dirty hands into the water. Or they can simply tip it over and pour into another bucket. Um, whatever they need. So he said they and yeah. that they go and a half and then in the house, the big one that makes it in the house. Oh, the one in the house. And puts that into that was two of this. It was two of this. I get the room like two yeah, edges. And yeah. and two of this and in the living room. Then they kill when you know when they get to the house, the one or the book I will perform. Like, uh, maybe we are two. I borrowed, he borrows my hair. He comes once. Yeah, okay. I Yeah. Um, donor support is a crucial component of the project at the moment. Um, we're finding that most of the beneficiaries consist of a household that has a granny looking after a lot of grandchildren rather than enjoying her retirement. Uh, because of the effects of HIV and AIDS, there's generation that's gone missing. So they're now looking after all these little children. So they generally are quite impoverished and, and very difficult to source funding of their own to buy one of these. Um, so we're not even retailing these at the moment. Um, we're focusing very much on donor funding and getting them subsidized. We do believe that it's important for communities to contribute to these and it's done in one of two ways. They are either um, come up with approximately 10% of the cost of the roller which is used to cover the transportation cost to get the rollers to them. Um, this doesn't apply in all cases but it, it does happen quite a bit and the other way that they can contribute is voluntarily helping out in the community. Um, there's many different needs um, and so people can actually earn their contribution. Uh, the way we distribute or determine who does and who doesn't get in the community is left to the community leadership themselves. One minute left. So we, we don't dictate to the communities how and who should get the rollers. We leave that to them to determine that themselves.